I have been playing Roblox for just over 10 years now. And although saying that out loud makes me realize how old I am, the point is there are a lot of games that I have played that were popular back then that now are not. And with Halloween right around the corner, I decided there's no better time to talk about and look at Roblox horror games that didn't stand the test of time. Or in other words, were forgotten. And just to be clear, for the sake of this video, a forgotten game is just a game that not a lot of people play anymore. So around 50 or less active players. There are games in here I am sure everyone knows about, and some I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of. With all of that out of the way, my name is Rogue, and I still suck at making intros. If you have been playing Roblox for a while, you definitely know this one. Which shouldn't be a surprise since this game is older than a lot of people watching this video. But for those of you who haven't played it, let me break it down. In Stop It Slender, there are two teams, Slenderman and the humans. As a human, you need to find 8 pages before time runs out. These pages are randomly spread across the map, and some are locked behind areas you can't access unless you power up generators. As you look for these pages, Slenderman is hunting you. Looking at him directly will cause you to take damage, and obviously taking enough damage means you lose the round. As Slenderman, you need to dispose of every human before time runs out or before they collect all your pages. You have the ability to turn invisible, which also gives you the added bonus of letting you travel around super fast. But while you're invisible, you cannot damage anyone. Turning visible turns you slow but you can only damage players when you're in this state. The proxy is also part of Slenderman's team. They act as a sidekick to Slenderman. They can cause confusion to players and are also capable of damaging them. For a game made in 2010, it's honestly pretty solid. Now, despite me categorizing this game as forgotten, that really only applies to its player count. Because this game, even 14 years later, still gets updates every now and again. Now, I don't know the exact time it lost its traction, but I can tell you it's been struggling for a couple years. During my research for this game, I looked at one of Flamingo's videos. Yes, that's how scarce information on this game's history is. I had to look at a Flamingo video. I'm not complaining though, I love Flamingo. Anyways, in a video where he plays Stop It Slender, which was uploaded in 2018, the game had less than a thousand players. Now, obviously, player count is not a metric for a game's quality. If that were the case, Blocks Fruits would be one of the greatest games in human history. And that is just flat out wrong. But it is sad to see such an iconic game not receive a lot of attention. I personally revisit it every now and again, and if you haven't in a while, you should. If you haven't played it ever, you also should. It's one of the best classic Roblox games out there. For anyone new to Roblox, camping in 2018 was our strongest battlegrounds. What I mean by that is, it released and became so popular, everyone copied them, which effectively spawned a new genre onto Roblox. Every other day, there was a new camping clone. Some were good, others were not. It's not too common that a single game becomes so popular and influential, it basically starts a new category, but this was one of the first and biggest instances of that. Now to explain the game to anyone that hasn't played it, likely because you were born last week, camping is a story game, and that means you and anyone else who is playing it are playing through predetermined events, which very rarely see any alterations. Sometimes actions can lead to different endings, but besides that, the game is basically the same to everyone. It's obviously outdated now, but 6 years ago, this was basically the pinnacle of Roblox games. Now not only was every other developer trying to cash in on the hype by copying this game, but it also copied itself. You see, camping is just the first in a 5 game wide story. Camping 2 and 3 being sequels to the first camping, and Hotel and Mansion being prequels, meaning this is the correct chronological play order. Is this a case of a well thought out plot or just really milking a game that was popular while you still could? Who knows? 
We know. We all know what the answer is. Now just like Stop It Slender, I couldn't find exactly when Camping and its clones were no longer popular, but it clearly hasn't been front page material for a couple years. It left its mark on Roblox, and rather or not it was intentional, it did inspire a lot of other great games. I don't revisit this one too often, mainly because it lacks replayability. But if you want to experience a giant part of Roblox's history for yourself, why not give this game a try with some friends and start panicking when one of you gets the bad sandwich. I love this game so much. Okay, obvious things out the way, this game is meant to deceive you. If you looked at this thumbnail, I'm sure you'd be expecting some low quality simulator, obviously themed around submarines. I doubt anyone who didn't already know that wasn't the case would guess they'd be playing a Five Nights at Freddy's style game set in the Mariana Trench that actually had a pretty heavy story backed up by heavier lore. More on that later. In in terms of its gameplay, it's actually crazy how good it is. Like I mentioned before, it's very similar to a Five Nights at Freddy's game, and a good one at that. You are stuck in this small submarine surrounded by nothing but a wet, dark, void, praying nothing is out there. While down here, you need to complete your daily tasks if you want to return to the surface. These tasks include recording audios, scanning the nearby area, and collecting samples. Do note that your oxygen and power supply are not infinite, so you don't have much time. But worse than all of that is that there is something down here with you. Meet Jerry. Jerry starts off pretty friendly, actually giving you advice on how to manage your situation better. But as the nights go on, he becomes more aggressive. You need to manage your limited, depleting resources, finish up your daily tasks, and keep Jerry from reaching you. Where do I even begin? For starters, this game was never as big as the other two, which is sad because so far, this is the best game on the list. Now, it did have a certain in popularity a couple years ago, but the reasoning for that surge is not the best. Something I'm sure a lot of you are racing to comment, and hey, don't let me stop you, is that this game is connected to the Smiles family. What is the Smiles family, some of you ask? Honestly, that could be its own video. To keep it short, the Smile family was basically this mythological family that was super popular on Roblox back then. There's a ton of lore behind it, which, like I mentioned, this game is heavily tied to. Out of all the games here, this one definitely had the most effort put into it, both from a conceptual and gameplay standpoint. So instead of recommending you play this game, I will beg you to play it. It's fun and I know it will never be front page material since Roblox players have questionable taste, but I do think you guys deserve an actual well thought out game. Okay, a line needs to be drawn. Is this actually a horror game? Does this at all fit in with the other games I'm talking about? Am I just including this because I want to talk about it? Apocalypse Rising is one of the most well-known Roblox games of all time. It's up there with titans like Prison Life and Epic Minigames. Now, seriously, I do actually consider this to be a horror game, since number one, when categories existed on Roblox, I vividly remember this game having the horror tag. And number two, I was scared out of my mind playing it when I was young. Its gameplay is nothing complex. You make your character, grab a bunch of loot, grab even more loot, take out zombies, start building up confidence, then randomly lose everything and drop the game for months. Hey, that's kind of like Minecraft. Now, you might have thought that Stop It Slender was old, being made in 2010 and all, but this game is actually older. Not by a lot, but it was made in 2008. And I feel like the graphics really reflect that. This game has had a very weird history because even 16 years later, people are 
are still playing it. Not a lot of people, but I think it's noteworthy for a game this old to have any form of longevity, especially on Roblox. There are very few games that are even close to being as old as this that get any form of attention. Now I said this game had a weird history for a good reason, because this game had a sequel that right now isn't actually doing bad. But when that sequel first came out, everyone hated it. I'm fairly certain they tried locking it behind a paywall, which was dumb. Even aside that, a game as iconic as Apocalypse Rising getting a sequel 9 years after it came out is unheard of. Unfortunately, the game is now all but abandoned, at best getting a small update once a year. These days, it's mostly played by chill OG players or really annoying exploiters. Has it aged like milk? Yeah, I still love it. I know the very large majority of you are looking at this and you're super confused. I know that map, and it's not called Underground Base, that's Area 51. Well, actually, all of those Area 51 games you've seen or played are copies of the map made by Icy Fresh, the original creator of the now known Area 51 map. This map was made in early 2008, making it the oldest game on the list. Those copies I mentioned wouldn't be made until 3 years later in 2011, where after the first copy was made, many, and I mean many, would follow right after. Thank you Toasted Cherries for this information, I would be lost without you. All of you should check out his work. Though I wouldn't say it made its own genre on Roblox like camping did, there's no denying that Area 51 games are absurdly popular on the website, so popular that almost every Everyone, me included, have played them at least once. While the original undeniably had a giant impact on Roblox, said original doesn't actually get any attention. It is the only game on the list to have zero active players. While some of its copies became super successful, some gaining over a billion visits, the original doesn't even have half a million. Now, the game itself doesn't actually have much to offer. It is is severely outdated with some of the map outright being broken, and there's honestly nothing to do but explore. But I did want to bring it up since it was a giant part of Roblox's history and deserves to be recognized for it. There's not a lot to talk about with it, but it was worth mentioning for simply being one of the most iconic maps on Roblox. If you love games like Pressure or Doors, you really should thank this game. Now obviously Pressure took heavy inspiration from Doors, and ended up making a better game in every aspect. I do not apologize to any Doors fans watching this, I am simply stating the truth. But for the 5 people living under a rock who have yet to learn this, Doors took inspiration from Rooms, which if you've ever played Rooms should be very obvious. And actually, while making this video, I learned that even Doors acknowledges this. If you get far enough into Doors, you end up in a map that is identical to the one from Rooms. In the game, you're going from room to room. Shocking. And the further you go, the darker it gets and the more aggressive the creatures that live there become. This is the newest game on the list, only being made in 2020. And like I mentioned before, this game directly and indirectly inspired giant Roblox games. As the newest game, it has the least amount of history and its gameplay is super simple, but I did think it was worth mentioning since it gave us an amazing game. It also gave us doors, but who cares about that? And those are some of Roblox's forgotten games. How many of these games did you know about, and how many did you only learn about while watching this video? I had a lot of fun researching these games, and I hope even the most dedicated Roblox players learn something new. Have a happy Halloween, my name is Rogue, and I'm still not good at making outro.